On today's video, we're going to take a look at two different houses. A house built very traditionally, framed with normal methods, just like we've been doing for the last hundred years. And then we're going to go take a look at an advanced frame house, a house that uses some new methods, some new techniques, and even some new materials. And we're going to explore the differences between the two and why you might consider going advanced framing for your next build. Okay, first I'm coming to you from a traditionally framed house. This one has probably started framing around the 1st of 2017. And this house being framed now really looks like it could have been framed 30, 40, maybe even 50 years ago. A lot of the techniques on this house have been around for a long time. Let's look at the details. First, exterior walls. These are two by four exterior walls. They're on 16 inch on center increments. That's pretty standard, pretty normal. The next thing you'll notice is this outside corner here. Look how this corner was framed. This has a lot of lumber and probably a dead air space, but what you're gonna notice is there's no way to insulate this corner. Effectively, all the corners in this house are uninsulated. The next thing you'll notice on this house is the headers. These have traditional two by headers. This back window, for instance, this is a two by 12 header on the back window. So from the window all the way up to the ceiling, we've got no insulation, just a giant header taking up that space. My guess is on this one story house that if they would have actually engineered that header size, we could have gone a lot smaller and probably gotten some insulation in that space. The next thing you'll notice on this house is the jack and king studs that are holding up that window header. We've got one king stud, that's the long stud, and then we've got two jack studs. Plus we've got a lot of lumber underneath in this corner here. So there is basically a huge uninsulated area at the back of this house. Remember lumber is about one uh, R1 per inch. So around this whole window at best, we've got probably an R3 or maybe an R4, very little insulation there. The next thing you'll notice on this house is where interior walls are mating with outside walls. Again, we've got a dead air space that has no insulation and no good way to insulate that. That's very traditional to see, but on the other hand, I'm gonna show you an advanced frame house that uses ladder blocking, which is a much better way to get what you need for drywall hanging, but also to get some insulation in that space. All right, guys, one last thing here. Don't be fooled by that green at the base of the house. That's just a termite treatment. Everything you see in here is standard SPF lumber. Let's contrast this house with an advanced frame house that a friend of mine is building in another section of town. So let's pack up and head over there. All right, now let's have a look at this advanced frame house and let's think about the differences between this one and the traditional framed house that we just left. So first, the first thing you're gonna notice is two by six walls here on 24 inch centers. The reason why we wanna reduce the lumber overall is because a stud like this two by six is roughly R6, but the cavity can be filled with R19 if we're using bats or maybe R20 if we're using a blown in or a total fill. So if we can reduce those studs without hurting the structure, we can get a better R value for the overall wall. Next thing you're going to notice on this house, let's look at the headers. On this house, we've got LSL headers that the engineer designed specifically for the load, so they're not oversized. And we pack those to the outside of the house, so we actually have room for an insulated header. Very unusual to see that in a traditional house. As most traditional houses have wood full depth on the header cavity, no insulation in that space. That's bringing the overall R value of the wall way down. The next thing you'll notice is where those headers are, we've got just one stud. Instead of a traditional king and jack stud, we just have one king stud and we've used a header hanger. These are the Simpson HX6 hangers and all that load is getting transferred with just one stud. Still gives us plenty of wood to install our drywall and our trim as usual, but now we've eliminated one stud in a critical spot for insulation. Okay, next let's talk about exterior corners. You know, in this advanced frame house, we've got two stud exterior corners that's given us plenty of structure, but now we're able to run that insulation easily all the way to the outside edge of the wall. Now we've ladder blocked this one so we can hang drywall traditionally. You could also go with uh, a drywall clip so you could eliminate that, but I kind of like having this structure for the drywall guys. It makes everything really easy and quote unquote normal. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about in this house as we think about headers is look at this gable wall in this house. On this back gable, we don't have structure. So the engineer, we verified with him, all we need is a single two by header in this case. And again, we can insulate. 
Now this builder chose to go two by six on the first floor, two by four walls on the second floor. Again, we can eliminate some of that additional wood. We're gonna really use our resources efficiently. And we've got a very well insulated house to begin with now because of this advanced framing. The last thing I wanna mention on this house is the exterior rigid foam. This gray material you're seeing here is actually the backside of this Zip R sheathing. Interesting new product where they've actually bonded polyiso insulation to their Zip sheathing. This is a half inch high grade OSB. It has this green weather resistant barrier on it already. And now this foam gets sandwiched on the outside. So where we do have studs, we've stopped that thermal bridge and we've actually doubled the insulation value at the studs. Remember I said earlier, a stud on the outside, a two by six is roughly R6. This insulation here is 6.6. .6. So now even where that stud is, we have an R12. And in our cavity now, if we're gonna use a blown in R20, we actually have R26 here. This is gonna really increase our insulation value of this house overall. Remember, you're gonna to wanna to vary the amount of exterior insulation though, based on your climate zone. So we're down here in Texas, we don't need a whole lot of exterior insulation to meet code, but if you're in a northern climate, you may wanna consider some thicker insulation to meet code in your climate. Last thought here, be sure you talk to an engineer in your local area about what you might use from this video in advanced framing. You know, this house is being built in Texas. I don't have seismic wind or snow loads here. So depending on where you're building in the country, you may have some different experiences for your house. Talk to that local engineer. We bless this house and we we're able to build a fantastic house with these advanced framing techniques. And this is gonna work in most parts of the country. Hey, thanks for joining me guys. Be sure you hit that subscribe button below. We're posting content twice a week, every Tuesday and every Friday. And I'd love to have you join me as I talk about how to build a house that's gonna last for a couple generations. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.